Hello, my beautiful Aries friends. I am so excited to be back. I took the month of February off of doing the 12 sign readings because I was moving countries, which is now complete. Um, and I'm so excited to be back and chatting with you about March, which is also a very special time as we move to the equinox, the beginning of the Western astrological new year and Aries season. And I love Aries energy. It's an energy that has always inspired me and reminded me of the creative aspect of just trying and getting out there. And all of the Aries friends that I've had in my life have been such great teachers for just learning to initiate things and get going and try. Um, so thank you all Aries for all of your inspiration through all of these years of my life. You all just really light me up. Um, this Pisces and Aries season, this month of March, is so powerful and beautiful. Um, what I will say about it before we even get into the details is that this is a month of rebirth. Um, it's like taking a huge dip in the ocean and kind of washing away any old electrical charges, any feelings of like grime, shame, guilt, exhaustion, um, storylines um, that have developed over the last couple of years as we moved through some different lessons and some different astrological energies um, and coming up fresh and awakening into Aries season because Nep the, uh, Pisces season this year is very, very powerful. It's also very dreamy, very Jupiterian, Neptunian, which means that it can be very floaty, uh, dreamlike. It can be a little disorienting if you're not used to working with water energy. Um, if you are, then you're going to have a great time. If you're not, you may feel some of those things, but that's okay. Just take a deep breath. Um, this Pisces season is all about transmutation. Um, we have this new moon in Pisces, and during that new moon, we have tons of conjunctions. Mercury and Saturn are, are going to be conjunct in Aquarius during that time. Pluto, Mars, and Venus are going to be conjunct in Capricorn at that time. And shortly after this new moon, Sun and Jupiter are going to be conjunct. So there's all this energy here that is meeting up and having us kind of going through like a deep dream, a deep sleep that we awaken from and feel refreshed, feel renewed, let go of maybe some of the ways we have been defining ourselves or holding on over the last couple of years. So this is a huge transmutational time. Um, and then we move into Aries season, the sun moves into Aries, Mercury moves into Aries, and there's a new moon in Aries on the 31st of this year. March 31st of this year. And with Aries season, you know, we still have tons of direct motion moving through the sky. Um, this is our first Aries season where we have the North Node in Taurus, where we have um, Jupiter and Pisces. And it's really the beginning of some huge energetic new beginnings. Um, I mean, just truly, I know we've been kind of talking about that since December, basically. There's been a lot of new beginnings flowing through for the last few months. But as we go into this new astrological year, and as we move through Pisces season, what's really happening is we're calibrating to some different tones. Um, it's not that they're better or worse, or that, you know, finally, we get to be something good, and we can just leave it all behind. And this is the moment. It's more that it's just a different tone. It's a different feeling. And with that in mind, I just want to say like the the message that came through for Aries, as I sat down was feeling through this month, um, was that, you know, this is a time for rebirth for you all specifically and especially because Pisces is, is the sign right before you. Um, when wherever the sun is moving through a sign right before our sign, it's always this wonderful time of dreaming, of resting, of preparing, of burgeoning. And then we head into airy season and that, this is when you can allow your energy to kind of flow forward into the world. And one of the things that's going to be important as we prepare for Aries season, as we, in the few weeks before the equinox happens, you want to let 
go. Let go of any storylines, any definitions of yourself that are not serving you. Because sometimes we have these ideas of this is my character, this is just who I am, this is just my story. And some of those things can be really helpful, really nourishing, something that you know we need to acknowledge and express and relate to. Other uh, Others of them, though, are just these ideas of who we think we have to be and how we have to hold on to that. Um, for example, like sometimes we might go through an awkward phase in life. <laughs> I've gone through a lot of awkward phases in life. Um, and there might have been times when people like told you you were awkward or you just felt awkward. And so coming out of that season of life, you might just be like, well, I'm just an awkward person. I just don't know how to do anything. That's just who I am. And it's fine to be at peace with your awkwardness. Um, this is just an example. <laughs> it's weirdly personal because I'm like, okay. Um, but it is that really true, right? Is it really true that you're just an awkward person? You know, um, is that a framing that works for you? Does it feel good to say that to yourself over and over again or to other people over and over again? Is Would you like to use different words for how you describe yourself? You know, for me, people who often think of themselves as awkward are the people I love the most because they're warm, they're honest, they are vulnerable, they show up truly into the moment um, and they're not just wearing a costume. So for me, people that often think of themselves as awkward are the people that I love the most. So for me, there's a totally different way to say that, right? So this is a wonderful time, nine of wands, to just think about if you've you know developed any storylines, any ways of talking about yourself over the last uh, a couple of years, Eight of Swords, our good friend Eight of Swords always coming in with some wisdom um, and just checking in. You know, how are you talking about yourself? How are you mythologizing yourself? How are you characterizing yourself? Are there some places where you're kind of making it hard on yourself and you don't need to? Right. And so this is a really wonderful time to reconnect, to be really deliberate with how you talk about yourself and your journey knight of cups and if there's anything you know if you've been through some trauma some stress some overwhelm in your life and especially over the last couple of years because this this pisces into aries season and this equinox is really going to be about us kind of culminating and understanding and reflecting on the last two years and then letting it go letting ourselves free from what we're holding so if you've been through some hard stuff and it has felt heavy and you have felt like you have been carrying a ton of weight this is a really great time to give yourself a break. If you don't want to carry it anymore or you want to change your relationship to the way you're thinking about that heaviness, that trauma, or that challenge that you went through, this is a wonderful time to connect with yourself and just see how you would like to talk to yourself about what has happened and how you would like to describe it and the keywords you're using. Um, so I'm pulling three cards from my classic tarot and then I'm gonna pull one card from my Oracle of the Hidden Worlds. This is such a fitting deck for um, Pisces season. <laughs> the Leap came out. Ecstasy, bliss, belief. That is such an Aries energy right there. This is this to me encapsulates what I love about Aries energy or one of the things that I love about Aries energy. Okay, so let's talk about let's talk about what's coming up here in your reading, my friends, because there's some powerful energy here. <laughs> And it does have a lot to do with being in what I call the haunted house, at least initially. So like I said, Pisces season itself is a really interesting transmutational Pisces season. It is just full of energy that is about rebirth, letting go, um, kind of being in the more hidden realm, <laughs> not really being as much in the physical, being in our emotive mushy space blob space, as I call it. And so with that Aries, we're having some review here with nine of wands and eight of swords. And don't let this freak you out. You know, these, these figures here represent the part of ourselves that has been through something big and heavy and probably hard, probably challenging. And that is a little nervous. That's a little scared. That's a little worn out. That's a little bit like, is this, is this just what life is? Is this how I'm always going to feel? 
Um, Nine of Wands often shows up for Aries. The world weary warrior is the nickname I've given for this guy because this is the energy of having held something together for a really long time, kept vigilant, kept on it, pushed through, and but the the challenge is over. The battle is over and this part of ourselves is still keeping an eye out for all the trouble, right? It's still vigilant. It's like our nervous system, our sympathetic nervous system is still looking for the trouble. And whenever Nine of Wands shows up, it's always a reminder that it's important to honor your inner guardian, your inner warrior, your inner warrior. It's important to love that part of yourself and also to let it know it can rest and also to put down all the, the armor and the protection and the hypervigilance. Um, and this is such a great way to heal and integrate if you have been carrying some weight and heaviness um, to honor that part of yourself that wants to protect you and also to let it know it can rest. Let your body know it can rest sometimes. It, you can use your energy for the fun, beautiful, connective things and not squander it all on just the self-protection. So there's a reminder there. We also have Eight of Swords, which is another classic. Um, Eight of Swords for me is so much about transformation and transmutation. I've always said when this card shows up, it's a precursor to something really big changing in life um, and something feeling and looking so different than how it has felt or looked for a long time. And, you know, it can be a little scary being an Eight of Swords energy, right? Because this is about somebody who can't move and can't really see the way and can be kind of in their haunted house in their mind. So reliving scary moments, kind of looking at the world as a place that can feel very dangerous, overwhelming, confusing, not safe to be in, um, and can feel very disorienting. But what Eight of Swords is trying to teach us every time this shows up is to get calm enough to hear our center and not be relying on external conditions to help us feel safe because of course we should it's a both and situation here every being deserves to feel safe and loved period in their in their conditional surroundings in their physical yes we all deserve that and that should be something that we as people strive to in our communities in the world absolutely and yet if we can't foster a sense of safety within ourselves, we could have all of the safest, safest, safest surroundings and still feel terror inside of ourselves. And I'm sure many of us have felt that. I know I have for sure, where I can literally look around and see that I'm in a safe environment. Thank you. Thank you so much. Power as a bee for that and still feel frazzled inside. So what Nine of Wands and Eight of Swords is reminding you here, my dearest Aries friends, is that if you have parts of yourself that are on edge, that are vigilant, that are feeling freaked out, listen to them, let them speak, but also help to soothe them. Because here's the thing. And you know, Pisces season is here to help you do that. Once again, it's like that deep dip in the ocean where we are allowing things to wash away, where we are allowing the tension to leave, where we are kind of going into the energetic realm, being a little less physical and being a little bit more energetic, like right outside of the body, or um, I don't even know how to use words right now, excuse me, um, and, and finding any healing that we need to heal. Then when we hit Aries season, what do we have? Immediately, Knight of Cups, the romantic. Um, this is a being that believes in truth, love, and beauty, poetry, flowers, gorgeous artwork, picnics in the sun, um, true love, romance. You know, this is the true believer. And what a counter to the nine of swords or to nine of wands and eight of swords. These are people who they've kind of gotten jaded, right? They're a little bit wary of the world. This is the guy that's seeing the world through rose colored glasses. So there is a return to this innocence. You know, the Knight of Cups has this innocent, dreamy sense. And of course, this can have limitations, right? When it comes to practical planning and getting things done and nailing down the details, Knight of Cups not going to be your energy. But this is such an essential energy. And it's one that's very, very easy to lo lose living a human life in this world. 
And whenever this guy shows up, it means it's time to get dreamy, to play, to focus on what you think is beautiful Aries, to fill your heart with it. You know, Aries season is going to be such a beautiful Aries season this year. I'm so excited for it. You have your new moon coming up here. The sun's moving through, Mercury's moving through. Jupiter is going to be meeting you all in just a little bit. In a few months, we're going to have Jupiter moving through Aries. Um, the energy here is so much about the beauty and the play of it all. So remember that. And the thing is, we can't get to that beauty and play if we haven't taken care of the parts of ourselves that are afraid and needing nurturance. And that is so important to remember. I think so often we want to slap a band-aid of positivity and movement onto things when we've just been through a lot. And it's so important to be with the parts of ourselves that are hurting so that we can be in the rose colored glasses mindset so that we can relax into it. And then we have the leap ecstasy, bliss, and belief. So it's so interesting because it is such a full circle moment here for Aries in this reading. You know, this is about just diving in and just going for it. It always makes me think about um, the creative process. I love to paint. It's not like my number one thing. I do love it. I love it. And um, I get really precious with it sometimes where I'm like, I have to do this perfect painting. It has to represent, you know, something I've just been through, something I've experienced. And, and I'll think about all the details of it. I'll take so much time, I'll obsess about it. I'll get very precious about what this piece needs to mean and look like and do. And sometimes that works out. And then I have to remember sometimes to just get, um, get the paints out and just let, let it flow on the page and just see what comes out. And it might, it might not look great the first time around. Sometimes I do this and it's like, oof, wow, that, that came out interesting. Um, but the point being that I'm no longer holding myself prisoner waiting for the perfect moment, the perfect opportunity for, I can only paint if it's going to be perfect. I think the leap with the ecstasy, bliss, and belief is about reactivating a part of Aries energy that I've mentioned already today, which is just trying, just taking a step, taking an action, moving in a direction and seeing what happens. That's one of the things I love about Aries energy is just beginning and enjoying that beginning and just going for it. And I think that that's what Aries season is going to be so about. It's about a renewal of some of that more innocent, playful energy that I think we've been missing in the world a little bit recently. And is so important. It's so, so important. And I'm really excited to see that showing up for you beautiful beings as we head to the equinox and to Aries season. Happy birthday, beautiful Aries. Thank you for being you. Thank you for bringing your fiery, beautiful, passionate, curious, playful, um, intense energy to the world because it means so much. And I want you to know that I love you so, so much. I'm I'm going to get emotional. <laughs> I will get emotional. I think about it too much. Um, I will be doing activations and weekly chats over on my Patreon for all sorts of things coming up this March. So I would love to see you there. We have such a wonderful little community and it's a great way for me to give you more. If you're looking for ways to hang out, you can also find me on my website on Instagram. There's only one true Sarah Verba. Sometimes there are imposters. They're coming in with underscores and dashes and all of that. Um, I will leave my handle so you know which one to follow. And I will leave my email and all the good stuff of where to find me below. I really love you all. I will see you for our next chat and for the, the Aries new moon coming up as well. I love you all and I will talk to you soon.